You know, have you ever made love to a guitar? It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. I'm spilling beer on myself. Well, that is your fault. You should learn how to drink, sir. Mm-hmm. Drinking and podcasting is not something that we uh, advocate for, so make sure not to drink and podcast. <laughs> we do it all the time. That's, since day one, that's what we've done. Uh, if I had beer. Oh, yeah, I do. I just have to go get it. Is it cold yet? How long will it be cold? Probably, probably. I'll go get it here in a second. Okay. Let's first introduce these movies. Yeah. All right, today we are coming back after Christmas vacation, mm-hmm. and today we are bringing you two, count them, two movies that you can watch out there at the theaters this time. The first movie is called Poor Things, featuring Emma Stone. Nobody gives a shit but you! And let's face it, Dad, you are not doing this for the sake of art. You are doing this because you want to feel relevant again. Well, guess what? There is an entire world out there where people fight to be relevant every single day, and you act like it doesn't exist. Things are happening in a place that you ignore, a place that, by the way, has already forgotten about you. I mean, who the fuck are you? You hate bloggers, you mock Twitter, you don't even have a Facebook page. You're the one who doesn't exist. You're doing this because you're scared to death, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. And you know what? You're right. You don't. That's from the fantastic movie, The Birdman. Birdman. I know. When I was looking through clips for her, I was definitely, definitely trying to that's find which ones would be the best. That's a great scene. There's many great scenes she does in there, but that's one of the best. Oh, she's so good. Yeah, that is the best scene in that movie, I think, actually. <laughs> um, all right. And then on top of that... The one, the only, whether did that. <laughs> Wonderful. Bid our father, the sea king, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury. Black waves teeming with salt foam. To smother this young mouth with punch and slime. To choke ye, engorging your organs, till ye turn blue and bloated with builds and brine and can scream no more. Only when he, crowned in cockle shells, with slithering tentacled tail and steaming beard, take up his fell befinned arm. His coral tine trident screeches banshee like in the tempest and plunges right through your gullet. That's from uh, The White House. Oh my God, I love that scene. God, I love The White House too. Now, for people that know don't know this, um, in that movie, we, we, uh, uh, farts more times than any human being <laughs> should ever do. I had a video that I was going to send you, and it was just going to be of him farting. And well, that's what I was going to play well, the, <laughs> as the clips. But, but, I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, who else is in this movie? Uh, Rami Yosef. You've all, you've all, dude, you gotta fucking call me, man. See, this is for the shit's fucking, it's not good. I don't know where you are, but it's not good, and I need your help. I gotta strategize some shit. The Salim and Ayala, they gave me a custom. It's the most expensive thing I ever held in my life, and I don't know where it is. I literally cannot find it, and I, and I, I think it got stolen, man. Okay, I think it got stolen. I, I was with the hooker at, at my dog's grave, right? And, and we, were, we were fucking chill. It was, it was sweet, but, but she, she knocked me off the bench. And I think she fucking picked me, dude. Like, she, like, tackled me. But I, I thought it was because she was horny because we were so, we were connecting, dude. It was, it was crazy. We were sitting there, and we were talking about God, and then we started making out. And then, and then, and it was... <laughs> it was God. Yeah, that was that's um, God, he's so good too. Her new stuff, let's do it. Yeah, and, and we, the one, the only, such a bulk, you gotta call him the Hulk, Mark Ruffalo. 
We don't have a choice, Robbie. If we don't rush to print, somebody else is going to find these letters no. and butcher the story. Joe Quimby from the Herald was at the freaking courthouse. Mike. What? Why, why are we hesitating? Barron told us to get law. This is law. Barron told us to get the system. We need the full scope. That's the only thing that will put an end to this. Then let's take it up to Ben. Let him decide. We'll take it to Ben when I say it's time. It's time, Robbie. It's time. They knew, and they let it happen to kids, okay? It could have been you. It could have been me. It could have been any of us. We got to nail these scumbags. We got to show people that nobody can get away with this. Not a priest or a cardinal or a freaking pope. Yeah, and that's from Spotlight, which is a great scene from the movie. Spotlight. Mm -hmm. And you notice what everything had in common? What's that? Michael Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about the you says, well, yeah. Okay, those two, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I know. By any means, that was not. I was like, was was like Keaton was in the White House? But, um, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was he, a seagull. He was the guy. He was the seagull. <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, the movie we'll be talking about first will be Poor Things, which can't wait to talk about Dude. that movie. Dude. I'm going to totally rip that one apart. Are you, All right. Uh, and then the next movie. <laughs> The next movie is the number one movie in the past week and one of the greatest movies of all time, maybe even the greatest movie in all of history about one of the most tragic families. I'm just kidding. I, I'm not going to say that like that. But anyway, uh, a movie that is out there talking about probably one of the biggest tragedies and not just sports entertainment or sports uh, period in life period. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you follow the entire lit livage and livelihood of the entire Von Eric family, it is not just the wrestling man. It keep, it was way before and it keeps going. And, uh, this is the movie is called the iron claw, um, with some of the sexiest men alive, starting with Harris Dickinson. So your intention was to pay me back. Yes. Really? So why did you take the 50 euro bill? Once I realized you didn't have enough cash, I paid the bill. And then instead of giving me the 50 euro bill, you put it back in your purse. What? I'm just saying what happened, the IR. What did you do? What the fuck are you doing? Don't fucking do that to me. Don't fucking do that to me, the IR. Don't do that to me! Don't fucking shove things down me, you fucking Seriously, child! Seriously, behaving like a crazy person! Shut up! Don't do things like that to me! What the hell are you doing with my money? Your money! Oh my god, it's, it's not about money, Yaya! It's not about... That's from uh, the Triangle of Sadness, which we talked about. Triangle of Sadness! You yeah. should definitely know that movie. Yeah, 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 it's a good one. It's from your boy. <laughs> I mean... My boy. That's from your boy, man. How do you not know that? I mean, my boy is... Oh, we'll talk about my boy later. But uh, who else is in this movie? Uh, more attorney is in this as well. My God, I'm not having this conversation with Audrey, you. Audrey, you can't go. This is not fair. Fair? Oh, okay. Let's define fair, shall we? Last night, a five-year-old boy was crushed because his father lied to him about coming to his birthday party. Fair? Last night. Was none of my business. None of my business. Two years ago, it was my business. But see, I don't have to care about that anymore. I don't care. That's the magic of divorce. But it matters to Max. Everything you do matters to Max, and everything you don't do. All right, now let me tell you something. I'm a bad father. It's from 1997's Liar Liar. I know, right? <laughs> she was in so many classic nice, nice movies pool, dude. and classic nice, shows, dude. Nice pool. I was like, I was like, man, how can I not pull one of the most famous lines that you know? I'm a bad father. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Um, also, another great pull, I thought, uh -huh. in my opinion, yeah. uh, who plays Daddy, Mister Fritz von Erich, Mister Holt McConnelly. Robert Paulson is a man, and he's dead now because of us, all right? Do you understand that? I understand. In death, a member of Project Mayhem has a name. His name is Robert Paulson. 
His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Come on, guys. His please. name, Stop it. His name is, Robert is Robert Paulson. Paulson. Come on, Chris. It's Robert Paulson. Paulson. His name is Robert 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 Paulson. His name. So I want to mention something. Uh, Matt was watching this. My brother was watching the Iron Call with me, and we saw him. He rings him and he goes, "His name is Robert Paulson." <laughs> <laughs> There's other great movies a whole um, mm-hmm. has been in too that I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I should pull from, from this. If I should pull that." But then I was like, "No, I definitely." It's gotta be that, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, like, I could have pulled from Nightmare Alley. I could pulled from Mine Hunter. I could pulled from even Justice League. Yeah. But anyway, um, then the guys who played the two main brothers in the Von Erich family. First, the one we all know him from his many, many now award nominated self. The one, the only. You might know him as White Trash from Chicago, but some people know him as a nice fine dining cook in Chicago. The one and only Jeremy Allen White. Robotics. But none of that undergrad filler bullshit. No 200 seat lectures taught by TAs. I just want the shit out in front of me. The shit? Yeah, the tools. You know, the toys, the stuff I can't get access to in my ghetto high school. Why? Because... I'd like to hang out with C-3PO in my lifetime, and at the rate you're going, that's just not gonna happen. I'm not following. You don't want to go to classes, you just want to play in a lab. I don't want to sit in a lecture that teaches me how to modify algorithms instead of think for myself. That's from Shameless, but he's also so good in the bear. <laughs> yes, and that line, like the next line in that movie, in that because we don't do them longer than a minute, I try yeah. not to do longer, longer clips, but the next line, the guy's like, C-3PO, man. That'd be fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, the line continues. But yes, he's also in The Bear. That was in Shameless. That went on for, what, nine seasons, yeah, ten seasons? Like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. something insane like that. And The Bear is nothing. Like, he gets nothing but... I mean, you should have... If you haven't gone and watched the interviews that these three guys have done for The Iron Claw... You literally need to go look out for them. Like everything they did with like uh, the Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon, all this stuff. Because and the questions went between pro wrestling and Jeremy Allen White, and if he can really cook. Yeah. <laughs> but last but not least, the hunk himself, the the person that put the musical in high school, the person that you know made us all think, wow, maybe there's better things on Baywatch than just Pamela Anderson. The guy who told us that having neighbors that all dress up like Robert De Niro is okay. The one, the only, Zach Efron. Rose before hose. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, man. Junk before truck. All right, balls before dolls. Padres. Before I sleep with two madres. Brad Pitt before grab clit. These nuts before skinny sluts. Masturbate before ask her to date. Beef stew before watching The View. Male erection before One Direction. Mario and Luigi before Thelma and Louise. Bert and Ernie before squirt and spermie. Man purses before regular purses. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. It does. Sports before genital wards. No, fucking, that's bad. That was a little weird. <laughs> A bit. John Madden before Aladdin. Jasmine Aladdin. from Aladdin. Aladdin. Yes! Ah. We just said that at the same time. Uh, what's your favorite uh, of those things that they were doing? What was your favorite? Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. I, I don't know. Jump I don't know if I want to get, say that out loud. Jump in charge. Um, jump for Trunk Street Funny. But, Jump before, um, yeah, yeah, that one's cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, but that was from Neighbors, and that's Zac Efron. The second movie, of course, we're going to talk about. And plus, Neil being a huge pro wrestling guy. I know what it's all about, brother. I know what the headlocks. I know about the sweat, the pain, taking the vitamins, saying the prayers, giving it up to the big guy every day because of the 24-inch pythons. Go wild on you. Whoa. You can find us on all the movies on Suck.net. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com. So I shoot this on Suck Podcast. We're on Twitter. And, or, I'm sorry. 
at X, MTS Podcast on Instagram, MTS Podcast. You guys want to give us a few shekels, um, support our are we, are we happy? Are we happy? I don't know. <laughs> Go to Patreon console. You know, it suck. If you guys uh, also want a shirt, like one Neil's wearing right there. Uh, go to pay, pay, I'm sorry. Go to bonfire to console. Choose on suck and something to do. Also, w2mnet.com. W2, w number two mnet.com. You'll find their podcast along with a bunch of other really cool ones. And uh, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, subscribe, watch Facebook, like the page. And if you're watching us, and if you uh, guys want, just want to subscribe to the podcast. I'm sure there's a button on, on the app you're listening to uh, where you can subscribe for us and we'll be there every day. Uh, we're movies on suck and something. You can find us everywhere. Neil, what you first, what's the business you're talking about today? Chris. Yes, sir. You know, this is such an article today because we're going to talk about a small pro wrestling company that became a huge pro wrestling company and then went out of business afterwards. So today, there's no way I could do this without talking about two of my favorite pro wrestling companies going on right now in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is near Texas, only three hours away from where the Sportatorium was. And first, I'm going to talk about Wrestling Against Hunger. Wrestling Against Hunger is a wrestling federation that actually uh, takes donations and helps the homeless here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you don't believe me, here's a picture of literally groceries that they have given out to uh, people that are in need, families that are in need. And we're not just talking homeless, talking people that just can't make it at the end of the week. But they do that all through pro wrestling. Pro wrestling, like this event coming up, which is called New Year's Revelation, which is January 6, 20. 24. It is at the Zion Community Church, it's 5400 Charles Page Boulevard, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, you can, or you can watch them on the NNTV app on uh, Roku, Amazon Fire, Andrew, uh, Android Television, and all that stuff. Including one of our favorite people in the entire world will be wrestling and the tag team versus the psychotic man. Mass and, uh, messengers. It's his new tag team, the Hell's Kitchen, who are the tag team champions. Our friend, our buddy, Lunchador. We love Lunchador. Yeah. We we love him so much that not only am I going to promote that the wrestling federation of Lunchador is wrestling. And guess what, Chris? What? I am going to nominate another <laughs> wrestling promotion that he wrestles in. Also in the uh, Tulsa area, it is Majestic Championship Wrestling. Now, Majestic Champion Wrestling, wrestling has an event coming up, New Year's Resolution uh, coming up on January 26th, where Lunchador will be wrestling there. So will be the Psychotic Messengers, as you saw, and my fr- friend Luke Bryan. Um Man, uh, Logan Bryan, I'm sorry. Uh, also look at it like they are going to be at the Indian Community Center, 23725 Wilson Road, uh, Hanyari, Oklahoma, 74437. That's on January 27. So make sure to go to either one of these wrestling shows. Both of them need money. Look at I mean, this is, look at that. That's a good, legit wrestling Right, you Neil know, knows good legit wrestling. You would. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good legit wrestling ring as well. Yeah. These companies are just two small promotions that are putting together nice wrestling for you and your family. It's cheap. It doesn't cost a lot. It costs fifteen dollars at the door. And let's be honest, what can you go do for fifty? You can't even go to the movies anymore for fifteen bucks. That's true. So go out, check out both majestic. Uh, wrestling company and wrestle against hunger. You can find them at uh, facebook.com forward slash wrestling against hunger and facebook.com forward slash majestic wrestling. Have a good day. Please drive through second window. You know, um, so we're talking about poor things real quick. I need you to say something for me. Say your ghost. What? Say your ghost. Lanthimos. Your ghost gets laid the most. No, your ghost. Lanthimos. What? That's the director of the movie Four Things. So make sure you say it correctly. Yorgos Lanthimos. No. What, 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 how do you say it? Yorgos Lanthimos. Yorgos. Yorgos. Lanthimos. Lanthimos. Good job. That's the director. Okay, so your ghost is what I'm going to call him. The okay, whole time. yeah, Yorgos Lanthimos. <laughs> he directed. Uh, 
he directed such things as Dogtooth, which was his non best picture, The Lobster, which I love The Lobster, The Favorite, I love The Favorite, and he also directed The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I love The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Uh, the, starring in Poor Things, uh, sorry, this is written by Tony McNamara and Alistair Gray. Uh, this stars the wonderful, the amazing Emma Stone. Nobody gives a shit but you! Also, Willem Dafoe, uh, Bill Stone plays Bella Baxter. Uh, Willem Dafoe plays Dr. Godwin Baxter. Bid our father, the Sea King. And uh, also stars Mark Ruffalo as Duncan Wedderburn. We don't have a choice, Robbie. <laughs> also, and Rami Youssef uh, plays Max McCandles. You've all, you've all, dude, you got fucking call me, man. So this uh, that's uh, also stars people like uh, Catherine Hunter as Swiney, Vicky Pepperdine as Mrs. Prim, Christopher Abbott as uh, uh, Jared Carmichael as Harry Astley, and Hannah Shogola as Martha Van Kurtzrock. Why don't you go ahead and read the story for this one, Neil? From filmmaker... Yorgos Lanthimos. And producer Emma Stone, Stone comes, the incredible, <laughs> and comes the incredible tale and fantastically evolution of Bella Baxter, a young woman brought back to life by the brilliant and orthodox scientist Dr. Golden Baxter. Under Baxter's protect, uh, protection, Bella is eager to learn hunger for the worldness she is lacking. Bella runs off with Duncan Whitborn, a slick and debauched lawyer on a whirlwind adventure across the continents. Free from prejudice of her time, Bella grows steadfast in her purpose to stand for equality and liberation. So, I got something to say. Okay, so this, um, the people describe this one as A24's bar- Barbie, which I thought was hilarious. But to me, like, uh, this, uh, whenever I hear about directors, hold on, dude, stop doing that face. Um, when <laughs> you're just in a weird face, whenever I, uh, hear about directors <clears throat> using other people's material, I get a little weary, but then I forget your ghost Lanthimos when you use other people, other people's material. He makes it fucking weird and awesome. I love, love, love this movie. This is the favorite movie I've seen this year. 100% easy. Uh, like, you know? You, okay, so yeah. But anyway, the uh, first I want to say that I love the atmosphere, the steampunk atmosphere. I love the acting. Uh, and, you know, uh, Neil said he saw, I think, five people walk out of this thing. Uh, five, five, five. Five people. No, no less than five people. But, I could More people could have walked out. But, no, uh, right as soon as the apple went up the u uh like, literally, <laughs> uh, everybody, like, people are just, like, fucking done okay, so with this movie. This uh, this movie's about it's about liberation it's about freedom it's about it's about doing what the fuck you want and I fucking love this movie dude this is my favorite movie I've seen this year easy easy and I'm not we'll do our we do our uh, top ten in a couple weeks but right now I I, I I fucking love this thing and I, I walked out loving this thing and th- each day it's gone by since I've seen it I just think I just think, thank God for your ghost Lanthimos uh, he's alive and made this movie. I wasn't disappointed at all. In fact, I, 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 see my I was when I overthought it. Uh-huh. Are you ready for yeah. my overthought? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everybody's fucking a baby. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we can talk about that a little bit. So you think it's well? Do you, <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think by the end of the movie she was a baby though? She was talking like a no. She was at least twelve. <laughs> no, she was talking like grown ass woman. At least like a couple. no. She was no no. It, it only made her mature more because of what she could do at such a younger age. But still, she wasn't gone for more than ten years, bro. She was gone for like a, cu- <laughs> like, a couple months, like, right? Yeah, a couple months. Yeah, but- a couple, well, maybe a year or two. Right, right. You know, because they did, they did get, you know, they did what they did. But, and that was the one thought that kind of messed with me a little bit. Uh-huh. But then I was like, I went and read <laughs> yeah. about yeah. the author yeah, yeah. about this yeah. and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and the guy's like over 100 years yeah. old. Like he passed away years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, he was eight in his 80s when uh, the director got his uh, permission to even do this movie. Um, but literally, uh, besides that thought, if you don't think of it like that way, mm-hmm. then this is an absolutely fucking great movie. It's, this was, it was good. It was cool. 
Um, Tell me you didn't love the atmosphere, like the the set design, the the uh, traveling part of it, which I you knew I, you and I are big about world building. Dude, the sets, the world building. I mean, to the point that I mean, I give me a second, right there, boom. I like <laughs> everything I have that's behind us is literally different sets from this damn movie, like all of this. Oh, you can't even see the boat. Uh, but um but like literally and and i even for people that are watching there are a few right now a couple visuals here the the the, um only thing wasn't just the characters the characters are great Mm -hmm. emma uh emma was great fantastic Uh, she was mark mark (laughs) freaking ravelo he he plays such a scumbag dude such a a scumbag uh slapstick like physical comedy i mean these characters were amazing. Um, Emma, the, Emma Stone was amazing in this movie. I love that she wants to do shit like this. She wants to do weird shit, and I'm all for it. This is amazing. Yeah, and and um, like the view of the camera, like where it looks like you're looking out of people every now and it, it then. Remind me a little bit weird. It lo- remind me a little bit of Wes <laughs> Anderson. Now how everything was uh, set up in that aspect. So w- one of the things, right. I, one of the things I noticed about I you, mean, you know what this like? Okay, like I, this is what I thought. Okay, let me give me two seconds, mm-hmm. and then because you talk for like ten minutes, so give me two seconds here. <laughs> okay. All right, um, I believe this was like Stanley Kerbuck meets. Uh, Bioshock Infinity <laughs> meets um, weird porno fetish. <laughs> and, like, it was all slapped together, and that's what we got. Like, literally, because some of these scenes were just ridiculous. Like, the views here, the, the scenery of how it looked, how she looked. Like, it, it just was, you could not, like, every <laughs> part of the ba- of the of the movie just like it made it and it made it the colors the scenery the lighting like you felt like you're in a completely different fucking world now all the people that left because of all the fucking and the there's weird stuff there's lots of fucking in this movie <laughs> lots yeah, of there's fucking. a lot of fucking there is a not, lot of fucking there's only a little bit of this erotic <laughs> cuz the other part you're kind of like what the fuck's going on but there's some of you like that that's kind of hot <laughs> but but um but uh yeah, there's a lot but of the thing is like, um, like how you kind of like if you're watching it because you're trying to watch an art piece, she gets bored with the fucking just as much as you do with the fucking <laughs> in the movie. Like unless you're a sicko that's just watching it to jerk yeah, off. No, no, like they they, like, they 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 do it smartly. You know, like it's yeah. very, it's very smart the way they do it, and uh, it, and there's a ton of it. But uh, so um. <laughs> like uh, well, Neil has that joke saying that Emerson has, has sense of humor while doing it, which I I can imagine just doing something as when you're doing it, like oh, dude, I can't I can't say enough good things about this movie. Like like uh, my wife said, it walks the thin line between porn and art. And I'm like oh, I think it's more art than porn, but um, but uh, yeah, no, there's some porn in here. I mean, it's naked and stuff like that. But guess what, guys? That's okay. Yeah. Because it's okay to see naked bodies and stuff like that. That's not against anything. Mm-hmm. There's not any rule in any book that says you're not allowed to be naked in public. Not yet. <laughs> but but, you know? um, but, uh, but I, seriously, this this movie, man. This uh, I'm I'm glad I got to see it before the end of the year because uh, this is my favorite movie I've seen this year. Easy. Well, not easy. It's but it's up. No, to- no. Bar- Barbie by far is still way better than uh, this. I, I, I'm uh, I, I'm stacking. I'm stacking. I got. Yeah, I'm Legos. great. I'm great. I don't know how many people walk out of Barbie, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I know some people did. They had to, have, man. It's uh, you know, women. We, we, we talk about uh, liberation and uh, and uh, giving women their fair shake. Not everyone's be cool with that, <laughs> you know. Like, so uh, you know, I'm sure Republicans have walked out of this. I'm sure there's some Republicans that walked out of Barbie. But, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. What happened? I, I think this is what happened. It was the day after Christmas. Oh, so the fan was like, "Let's go see a movie Emma Stone in it." No, no, no. <laughs> there was, there was no family. Okay. It, it was, it by any means. I'm pretty sure the people at the desk, if somebody saw a kid trying to get a ticket for this, was like, <laughs> boobs, <laughs> lots of boobs. Mm-hmm. 
And, but, and lots of men's asses too. So don't get, if you guys are about boobs, there's lots of dudes. You see some penises. In it. Oh yeah, you see you see a lot of junk. So going into this movie, just know you're gonna see junk. You're gonna see boobs. You're gonna see every, people are gonna be naked and they're gonna be fucking. Yeah, yeah. And that's just the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. All right, and it's okay because Stone Cold said so. That's natural. Yeah. Guess what's not natural? Murder. Yeah. That's not natural. <laughs> But guess what's natural? Naked bodies. Anyway, I furious jumping. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, um, but this movie was just it took an artistic look on everything on the pro- uh, prospects of uh, women, men, and uh, patriarchy and liberation. Like, literally, yeah, it, it is. It is the R-rated version of Barbie. Uh, Except for everybody has genitals. It's 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 fucking weird. You guys, like I, I can't say this enough. It's a weird movie, but uh, me and Neil, we like weird. We like uh, we like fucked up. We like fucked up movies. If and, it's not fucked up, then what's the point of watching it? I mean, there's some. I like things that test people. Test people to the point that they literally walk out of the <laughs> fucking theater. Yeah, that just. It yeah, made Neil, me so much happy. Neil, Neil texts me. Walk out of the fucking theater. Neil texts me. He's like, five people just walked out. <laughs> and I was like, I was wondering. And there was two different groups, bro. <laughs> yeah. There was a couple that was sitting in front of me, like in front of me because I was in the last row. I always sit in the last row because yeah, yeah. I got to write notes and stuff like that. And uh, so there's two that sat right in front of me. And then I saw three. Like after they saw the two leaving, they're like, yeah, we done too. Can I talk, <laughs> can I talk about the score of this movie? Like it was all like instruments I've never heard before. And playing a weird fucked up melody. I really enjoyed the music in this and how it was used. It was put in perfectly. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I mean the artistic backgrounds, the the music, the characters. This was a, this is one of those movies that it's fucked up and believe me, it's awesome. It's one of those that um it, it will go down in one of those ones that if someone has a DVD collection, this would be one of them that of the year that yeah. I would definitely throw in the year. Poor the things yearly is, DVDs. Is a uh, is if this this came out in 2023, and that makes 2023 even better when it comes to movies, we saw a lot of movies this year, and this is one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Poor mm-hmm. things, man. Dude. I cannot say enough things about this movie. Uh, that how much I was, I was uh, coming out of it. I'm like, this is why I watch movies. <laughs> that was one of those things. Like like I, I know last week I said that Wonka is the reason I like movies, and this is like the opposite reason. <laughs> but why I love movies and uh, poor things is great. It makes me. Can't wait till Yorgos does next. He actually has a movie coming out next year, if I'm not mistaken. So we get two of these Yorgos films within the span of a year, and I'm very happy about that. So, whew. Me three-ish. <laughs> All right, man. Do you have uh, quotes for this? I bet you have quotes for this. Of course I do. Of course I do. Come, come. You did do puzzles as children, didn't you? Do you believe in God? Do you mean me or a deity? God lovely, like dog face. Woof, woof. <laughs> to have a sexual experience, I would need every electro from the entire northern London. <laughs> Are you five years old? You want to hold your water? You need to hold your water. You did see work, me working on myself to get happiness, right? <laughs> I will smash his fucking head in. Why don't people do this all the time? <laughs> it's only you I do ferocious jumping with. <laughs> you disappeared. No one can just happen. What the fuck? Why keep it in my mouth if it's revolting? <laughs> <laughs> I must go punch that baby. Stop talking because your sound's making Bella annoyed. There's no evidence, as God would say. What's between you and me is more needed than what's between my legs. Come, I'm best drinking heavily, and I'm best losing heavily. I was trying to hurt you, and I understand I see dumb, beautiful ignorance. (laughs) I do believe my actions come from a good place. Shut the fuck up! (laughs) 
<laughs> you smell okay. All right, let's fuck. <laughs> we are a madam you feed with compliments. We are a machine you feed with compliments and chocolates. I bring beady eyes and badgering questions. My father told me always carve with convention. He was a fucking idiot. He was the root of all unhappiness. If I was to list the ways you wrong me, Jesus Christ, it would burn your fucking head in with the bat. I'd rather you shoot me in the fucking face, and I'm never happier than I am when I'm here. There you go. All right. My score in this is a 4.8. I lean towards 4.9. I fucking love this movie. Like, it's been a while since I gives something that high, but I fucking love this movie. Um, you know, what's your score on this one? Um, the score on this one has to be a whopping, uh, I got to give it a 4.4, man. I think this is one of the better movies of the year. I'm not going to lie. I liked it a lot. I'm just looking at my score and just like holding on to it for a minute because I don't want I don't know because I got to do my end of the year thing still. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I, 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 get, I get I get I give it a, a couple more days for you. You make your list and submit it in. So I'm doing the same thing. I I had a preliminary list and now I I'm changing it around a bit. But yeah, yeah and then we got New Year's and I got like freaking uh, pay per view this weekend. Oh, and yeah. I got oh and now I'm working a bunch more for the for doing sports. So I got to do some. Producing the sports shows. Yay. Yay. Sports. Yay. Okay. All right. I'm on RottenTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for poor things? Um, the audience, man. I don't know, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw some of the audience walk out. Um, I don't know, dude. I'm going to have to say 72%. 82%. Okay. Okay. What's the uh, uh, credit score for poor things? 91%. 93%. Name it! Okay. Chris, Why do I always got to be too off? Critics consensus is wildly imaginative and exhilaratingly over the top. Poor things is a bizarre, brilliant tour de force for director Yorgos Lanthimos and star Emma Stone. I'm going to read a bad review and a good review. Okay. I've read some bad reviews for sure. Uh, this is from Rex Reed, the Observer. He gives it one out of four stars. He says, I hated it, but we're looking to give it one star. For whimsical sets and costumes, there's a minute sprinkle of suspense while you wait for the point of view that never arrives. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> um, he fucking hated it. Okay, this is from Adam Graham in Short News. He says, The Grand Buffet of a film, likely the year's most audacious effort, and certainly one of its best, comes from visionary director Yolos Lanthimos, and it's his most out there film yet. So, uh, yeah, guys, go out and see this. Uh, it'll be uh, hanging around for a bit. I guarantee when the house will come around and it's gone, it'll come back up because uh, this movie deserves to be seen by people who can watch award shit and not get grossed out. <laughs> um, this is it's a fantastic film. They're just boning. They just put the penis in yeah, the there, vagina. There, there it's is okay. A, this is full of fucking. If you guys don't like fucking, I guess you won't like this movie. That's that's fine. That's the bottom line. Chris doesn't like fucking, so he didn't like this. What movie. are you talking about? But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, are you pulling news? You ready for news? You put the press press yeah, that I'm button already, with news. Already, yeah, already so did it, bro. Fuck, I'm already fuck, here. Let's fuck, do it. This is the movies that don't suck, and some of them news where I'm going to read stuff to Chris because he's blind in one eye and uses a visor just like Jordy from the New Generation. I don't think I'm blind in one. I mean, at least I don't think I am. Sometimes at night, I'm like, I, I, you know, whatever. Dude, yeah. you look like Popeye right now. <laughs> but um, Just saying, you look like fucking Popeye. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. All right, news. Let's talk about the big one of the week. Are you ready for the big one? Fuck yeah. I don't know if you heard this one. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Vin Diesel has been 
has been accused of sexual battery and discrimination and creating a hostile work environment against his former assistant. Allegedly, he committed a sexual battery assault against his former assistant, Austin Johnson, during the shooting of Fast and the Fear, Fast Five back in September of 2010. The lawsuit claims that Diesel forcefully groped and molested his assistant and forced her to touch his erect penis. Ugh. <laughs> um, so if, if this uh, happens, I think that maybe his direction company might pull out making Fast 11, right? Well, Johnson was fired right right after the alleged incident, whatever the incident was, and the um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I'm looking at who who says this. Vin Diesel's lawyer, Brian Freeman, said, let me be clear. Vin Diesel categorically denies the claim in its entirety. This is the first he has ever heard about the this more than 13-year-old claim made by a properly nine-day employee. This is clear evidence which completely refutes that the outlandish al- allegations. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but that's that's. I mean, that's that's. He's he's obviously not that fast or furious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, honestly, I won't be super upset if I don't see Fast Bex Part Two or whatever. Like I'll be like, you know, it's gonna happen. You know, like I can imagine what happens. You know. Uh, James Gunn is tired of you motherfuckers out there just to like saying whatever the hell you want to say about whatever. <laughs> uh, Batman 2 does not have Professor Pig, Scarecrow, Clayface, Hush, and Dick Grayson in it. That's the Batman 2 is not anything like that, he says. Stop saying stuff. Well, Stop man, being dumb. It'll be Joker, right? Because we saw Barry Keegan do the Joker thing at the end of it. You know? Who knows? Okay. Who knows? Right. Right. Uh, Lionsgate closes deal to acquire E1 from Hasbro with a couple big franchises Look that it got big. So Lionsgate mm-hmm. has now acquired um, over 6,500 titles, including the rights to the Transformers and Monopoly. I'm trying to think if a Monopoly movie would be any good, and the only way we can do that Mr. Give it to Greta Gerwig and show me something cool. Out Motherfucker, of it. we it doesn't have to be Greta Good Gerwig. All okay. right, she did a great job with Barbie, but there can be different versions of like you can make Monopoly, but make it like Billions or Succession or Suits. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. make it like that. Like, like, are you trying to take my Broadway? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, 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 I'll you see can, you in court. You can make a financial thriller, I think, right? Like, you could do that with me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, could just think about it. I mean, think of all those cards that you play with, like, you know, get a lawyer or go to jail, oh, you, blah, blah, you blah. You mean that game where you almost lose, like, friendships and, and relationships with your family? Yeah. <laughs> seven hours in. But you- also, <laughs> but also in this deal, they got a uh, yellow jacket. They got um. What else did they get? They got something else. The rookie, okay. uh, naked and afraid franchises. I so I mean, that's a lot of fucking good franchises to mm-hmm. pick up. That's cool. Uh, uh, X Men ninety seven titles have been revealed. X Men ninety seven is the cartoon series that is starting where the last one took off. It's uh, to me, my X-Men mutant liberation begins fire made flesh Montino. Remember it bright eyes shine with strength. Reborn tolerance is extinction part one and two and three. So um, where's it airing? Cause I know that Leah and me will be interested in seeing these. These are going to be on Disney Plus. They have not given the exact date yet, I don't think. Let me look through. Oh, March 27th. I'm sure you'll be there too. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be watching those along with us. Dude, I know. Have you watched the uh, What Ifs? Not yet. So much to watch. Dude. Oh, my God. They're so good. I'm, I'm halfway through. I got uh, two more, I think. I think, well, more than halfway. I've just got two more left. Um, producer says that Chris Rock would love love to continue his journey down the spiral path with the saw people 
it'd be nice if his movie was really good, <laughs> but it wasn't. Spiral from the Book of Saw is widely regarded as one of the worst horror movies ever made, but Chris Rock is still down with making a sequel. I was excited about it, and then I saw it, and I was no longer excited about it. Uh, this past week, Apple Plus TV has 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 now got its most watched movie ever in The Family Plan with Mark Wahlberg. I forgot that existed. I mean... It the, came out like two weeks ago, the thing, the thing is about, about Apple Plus is... Like, Apple, I, don't watch real, I don't really watch TV, so I don't, I don't know how advertising gets out, but I feel like they need to do more to get people to watch it. You know? The problem... The best thing, though, about Apple Plus, though... Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Everything on there is watchable. Yeah, yeah. They don't have one thing that's shitty. Yeah. Like everything. I watched The Family Plan. I watched it like three days ago, actually. I you was like just it? sitting around and I was like, oh, we're definitely not going to watch this because Chris hates Mark Wahlberg. And, I didn't um, say that. I mean, I, there are things oh, I don't you like. say it every time we, we review one of his movies. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> what's with about okay. Departed? I love The Departed. No, he says it. But, um,. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Chris hates people from Boston, so therefore, uh, mm-hmm. literally, we can't, we couldn't review this movie. So I was like, "Oh, fuck it, I'll watch it." <laughs> we could, I think we was, talked about what we're gonna move before. <laughs> but what do you think? I, it was a really good movie. It was is it really a family funny. movie? Was, um, yeah, sort of. I mean, yeah. it's um, because it's the whole um, you know, he's a dad and he used to be like a hitman, and then. Like the hitman world gets up to him, and it's kind of a comedy slash action. Okay. Like his family doesn't even know he's a hitman, and he's like killing people while they're on family vacation. So okay. it's like National Lampoon meets like True Lies would be like the best way to say this together. This is his True Lies, though. Yeah, this is his True Lies. It's pretty. It's really good. Dude. <laughs> okay. It's, it, it, it's, I'm, I was pretty happy with it. Okay. Um. Finally, we have the highest merchandised property ever from Star Wars to go. It went for $1.5 million a prop, which has made it the most expensive prop sold at an auction. And it is from Star Wars A New Hope. You want to guess what it is? Yes. <sighs> It's not a lightsaber. I've imagined the lightsaber that. No, it's not the lightsaber. It's is it not a helmet? The light, but you're close to be in the in that same era of lightsaber stuff. Is it a helmet? No. Mm. Mm. Is it a blaster? It, it's a gun. It's a blaster. It's a, gun. It's a blaster. Yeah, it's, it's a blaster. It's Han Solo's blaster. Han Solo's <laughs> blaster went for one point five million dollars. Quick question: it, it broke the Guinness World Record as the most expensive prop gun sold at auction. Did he shoot first? Yes. Okay. Right. He shot first. God damn it! <laughs> um, sad news. Uh, another sad thing that happened. Um, Lee Sun Kun uh, died. Oh, yeah. From Parasite, he was, you know, one of the most award-winning movies, like, what, two years we ago? Like, we like Parasite quite a bit. Oh, yeah, we loved it a bunch. Uh, he committed suicide. Uh, remember, folks, if you have some thoughts like that in your head, there are suicide numbers. Please find help. Please find help somewhere. Call me. I'll talk to you for hours. Yeah. Chris knows I'll talk to you mm-hmm. for hours, even if we have nothing in common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so please uh, do. Uh, but uh, sadness out to him and all his family. Mm-hmm. There will not be a rush to make a sequel for Godzilla Minus One. They are going to work on it carefully because they don't want to fuck it up. Fans are screaming for a sequel because of how good the movie Godzilla Minus was, One was. Me and Chris both enjoyed it. Quite a bit, yeah. Very thoroughly, quite a bit. Um, but they are very it's like, hey, dude, that took a few years. We're already working on an animated movie. We're already working on... Uh, there's a show going on on Apple Plus that I didn't want. I didn't start watching called Monarch. That is about oh, that yeah. group. Yeah, yeah. Kurt yeah. Russell's in it. Oh shit! Okay. And I, I was like, I was going to start watching that this week to some to some point. But um, so they want to work on it slow. Hey man, 
if they get it before I die, at least if I get to see it, I get to see it. Uh, the, 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 Killer I mean, Clown. Yeah, they always will be like, that will come out before I probably like, pass. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I'm excited about. So Killer Clowns. Um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is getting a streaming miniseries. The 1980s cult classic uh, will be on a streaming service, according to director Stephen Chade. Uh, hopes to reveal Kill Clouds from Outer Space as an eight-part miniseries for streaming, continuing the story of the original characters and introducing new talent. That, mo- that movie scared the living piss on me when I was a kid. I didn't want to get shot with a, you know, a cotton candy gun. Terrified by it, but you know. Um, Marvel Studios will reportedly still be ending the multiverse saga with King the Conqueror. Okay, so they're done to do King of the Conqueror. Okay, so uh, you and I think that you should recast him, right? Like, do you think that's what they're gonna do? It says that a King variant played by a different character will more likely happen, or they might switch it over to Dr. Doom being a part of it and stealing his powers. That's literally what their and what their ideas are at this point. Okay. Well, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. Uh, Timothy uh, Chalamet's Wonka is the best Rotten Tomatoes audience score of all the Wonkas. I mean, there are two Wonkas, right? There are three. There are three, right? There are three Wonka films? Well, I mean, there's Willy Wonka, there's Charlie and Chocolate Factory, and Wonka. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I like Wonka quite a bit. You and I both actually love Wonka. Really? really? Just, yeah, I think so. Well, once you really, really want some chocolate after that, after that happened, I got we chuckle for Christmas, so I'm feeling good about that. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not happy with it. You never had chocolate? He says that to the to the noodle. He's like fucking incredulous about it. Are you? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Trying to find mm-hmm. the other other things. You- <laughs> Henry Cavill's Warhammer Forty Thousand uh, Universe is officially on the way. The 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 signatures have been signed and Amazon studios will be doing it with them. Yeah. Games workshop and Amazon studios aim to adapt the in- insertion and intention lore of Warhammer 40,000 into visual storytelling with multiple storylines potentially explored. Neil, uh, we're going to get a bunch of emails from nerds saying 40 K. So, um, Oh, 40 K it says 40,000 K on here. Okay. Sorry about that guys. So real quick, you know, it turns out that Henry Cavill is a giant nerd, right? It's a giant geek that Henry Cavill. We we knew this from the beginning. Okay, yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, who didn't know that from the beginning? I knew Super, it from the beginning when we started. Superman uh, and, and, and fucking uh, Witcher. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Uh, one span film, The People's Joker, is getting a theatrical release. The People's Joker, a queer coming of an age superhero world pa- parody, was pulled from the TIF due to copyright issues. The People's Joker, a one span queer parody film, is getting a theatrical release on April 5th. The dark comedy follows Joker, the Harley Quinn, a struggling clown dealing with gender identity in a world where comedy is outlawed. Mm-hmm. The People's Joker was created as a DIY community project for queer artists featuring over 200 prominent queer creators. So, like, uh, when did this come out? Like, when was it? It's filmed? coming out April 5th. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I mean, are, you definitely want to see it, I'm sure. Definitely. I, I want to see anything that's got banned from other places. <laughs> I, want place, I want people to tell us no, and then I'll be like, okay. Apparently it has a Bob Odenkirk and Scott Ackerman, Maria Bamford, Tim Heidecker, like really funny people in it. Cool. All right. Uh, everybody's fa- favorite new Jack Gyllenhaal movie that they haven't seen yet, Roadhouse, <laughs> will be hitting streaming platform uh, Amazon on this on the March uh, where's that? March 21st, 2024. Uh, the movie with him and Conor McGregor, the famous UFC champion, will be on Amazon Prime Video. So make sure to watch out for Jake Gyllenhaal, Conor McGregor, and Roadhouse. You won't watch that. 
<laughs> what the fuck watch that? Of course yeah. we're going to watch it. Are you a big fan of the original Weird House? Is it something that you like, hold in high regard? Roadhouse. 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 Um, everybody, uh, Emerald, uh, Emerald Fennell wants you to know DC Santana is dead in the water. It will not ha- happen ever again. Peter Sa- uh, Saffron <laughs> declares that Jason Momoa is the only Aquaman in the DCU, and he will probably still be the Aquaman in the future, even if there is no Aquaman in the movies. Guys, we're talking about we're talking about we're, we're, we're probably doing Aquaman next week, Aquaman and um, Rebel Moon next week. So yeah, definitely. Um, John Cena's critically panned shitty movie of all time, The Marine, is now become one of the global's most popular action movies because of Netflix. Well, it's John Cena. It's been seen over 7.6 million hours viewed by over 5 million viewers. Weren't you one of the ones that said it was really shitty? Like, you're like, what's. Me and my dad started laughing so hard at it. <laughs> um, that it was ridiculous. We started laughing so much. I, I can't even remember how much we laughed, but we were just like, uh, you know, did you laugh more, th- more than when you and I together? So we laughed a lot when we were together. Yes. Me and my dad laughed. We were taking shots of like, um, we were taking shots of whiskey, like every couple of seconds. <laughs> laughing at it. You know, when you come back down here, we need to go Rhythm and Booze. Rhythm and Booze! Yeah. I haven't seen that play in such a long time. All right, Jordan Peele's next two movies now uh, lost 2024 releases. They're all going to be pushed back to 2025 Fuck. because of all the po- you know the strikes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they all got pushed back. Uh, ben Stiller, are you ready for this? Of course. Ben Stiller to star in his first Starring role in over six years. Yeah, it's been a while. And David Gordon Green's Nutcrackers. Okay, I mean he was the last starring role was Zoolander too, right? I forgot, I forgot, what, what. What's that? Was the last star, starring role was Zoolander too? Is that what I'm thinking of? Probably, yeah. I'm gonna say yeah. Nutcrackers follows the work base Mike, played by Stiller, who must reluctantly travel to rural Ohio to look after his four rambunctious nephews after their parents die in a car accident. What begins as a three day trip to find a foster care turns into weeks of farming farm life mayhem and the realization that he doesn't need to find them a home. They are found one for him. Oh, I don't know how this movie goes. <laughs> Last but not least, Scream 7 is still just fucked. Uh, <laughs> the director is now out. The director's like, I'm done. I'm out. He said, end quote, Christopher Landon said, it is a dream job that turned into a nightmare. I bet, man. Like, like you got these people that, are, that like, everyone thought that, the screen was back, and then that you drop a well, then you can't have who you want. And they're like, nah, like like why would I see this? But you know, we, we like Christopher Landon. He's a happy death day and freaky, and happy death day to you. And now that he's out there, I don't think anyone cares to see it. He said, I I guess now is a good time to announce I formally exited Scream 7 weeks ago. This will disappoint some and then delight others. It was a dream job and it turned into a nightmare. My heart did break for everyone involved. Everyone, but it's time to move on. I have nothing more to add to the conversation other than I hope Wes uh, Craven's legacy thrives and lifts above the din of a divided world. But him... And Kevin created is something amazing, and I was honored to have the briefest moment basking in their glory. Talk about classy, you know what I mean? Like, like that is a classy fucking individual. So uh, I want to go up and kind of give him a hand job. I mean, would he? We'll have to know if he'll. he'll I mean, I mean, honest, if I, I saw you coming, wanting to give me a hand job, I'd I'd probably have to back away. It's a politely, <laughs> politely, to politely like, decline. Like, no, the weirdo's coming. Yeah. What is he doing? I was gonna get my car off to the door, and you'd be like, "Hold on, you're not gonna. I want to get a hand job. I'm like, I don't want one from you, especially. I don't want a hand job. I don't want you to handy my jobby. But anyway, Chris, that's the news. All right, let's do the, the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a little drunk, so. That's the movies that suck and some of them news. I told Chris a bunch of stuff. He has to like it or he finds a new (laughs) co-host. Well, I mean, I like it. I don't think I could have, like, honestly, our names are in the theme song. If if you exited or I exited, it'd be just a completely different show altogether. It would be funny. You'd have to edit it, and then it'd be like, "Here's a show with Chris and another guy." <laughs> you know what I, mean? I might just do one myself. And you were super sad. They're like, "This is the super sad man show." But um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chris, you're. Let's talk about that on call. Directed by Sean Durkin. Sean Durkin has directed such things as a. Uh, yeah, he hadn't directed a lot, but uh, he directed this, and along with the Nest. Uh, Dead Ringers, which is a TV show, Martha Mar- Martha Martha Macy May Marlene, and uh, this is stars the ever sexy. I mean, he's in this movie especially Zac Efron. Rose before hose. Also, um, he plays a. Uh, sorry, that shit's all fucked up. Uh, he plays uh, Kevin Von Eric. Jamie Allen White plays Kevin uh, Carrie Von Eric. Robotics. Also, Harris Dickinson plays David Von Eric. So your intention was to pay me back. <laughs> also, more Terry Tierney plays uh, Doris Von Eric. My God, I'm not having this conversation with you. Aubrey, you can't. And also, Holt McCann in the colony plays Fritz Von Eric. Robert Paulson is a man, and he's dead now because of us. All right, do you understand that? I understand. Uh, Neil, why don't you, and, uh, this also stars... Uh, some actually wrestlers in this one. It's got a. It's got Chavo Guerrero Jr. as the Sheik. Um, what was his name again? Chavo Guerrero Jr. Chavo. Very Chavo. Good. Yes, I know Chavo. Chavo Guerrero. Guerrero. I know his dad it's too. Guerrero. I know his dad. It's Guerrero, yeah. not Guerrero. I know, I know his dad, Chavo Guerrero. Just, yeah. Anyway. No, you don't. And Red, <laughs> and Red Shoes Dugan. Uh, yeah. I I I know only because it's the Mount Good song, but you know what's written story uh, for. Uh, the Iron Claw. The Iron Claw. Mm-hmm. The true story of the inspirable Von Eric brothers who made history in an intensely competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. Through tragedy and triumph, under the shadow of the... Are you right? uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you why it's funny in a second. I'm okay. starting it all over. Yeah. Five, four, three, okay. two, one. The true story of the inseparable Von Eric brothers who made history in the intensely competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s through tragedy and triumph under the shadow of their demeaning father and coach. The brothers seek larger than life immortality on the biggest stage in sports. I want you to start, Neil. This is a movie that you were... All right, first, uh, the reason that's funny is because the WWE DVD of the WCC uh, UW, uh-huh. which is World Class Championship Wrestling, is called The Tragedy and Triumph of World Class Championship Wrestling. Okay. And they, and they used it in their explanation of the movie, which is kind of funny. So it's like, oh, I wonder where you got all the facts for this fucking movie from. Uh, right, so- <laughs> but anyway... I'll just start this one, Neil. Um, go ahead. Start it out. First off, um, going in as a wrestling fan, I knew, I knew, again, this is like going in if you're a Batman fan to a Batman movie. You got to 100% put, the, put your ego at the door and not try to expect the exact thing that you want to expect. You know, like you, you, you know, there's still not been my Batman has never been on TV, on never been on a movie. Mm-hmm. You know, my Joker has never been on a movie, you know, or, or TV. Same thing with how I would describe the Von Eric life and what went on. Um, I feel like they they were being nice. <laughs> about the Von Erics. Yeah, I, I would say that because I did a little dig diving after this. Oh, really? Yeah. You want me to send you some great interviews? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, they left out one of Von Eric's brother, like a, a whole guy, a whole man, and they just left him out of the movie. What the yeah, fuck? Right here. Uh, um, so 
And I understand maybe it's for timing or something like that. Then maybe not. I don't know. I feel like they could have fit it in there somehow. Like they could have fit it in there. But the problem is, is that his story is like two different people combined story together. I mean, this is kind of like what they did with um, uh, Pam Morrison, I guess. I think that was her name, Pam Morrison, uh, Jim Morrison's girlfriend. Okay. You know, in Olive, uh, uh, Oliver Stone's The Doors, yeah. that she was actually a representative of, like, five different women. And the uh, evil but witch it, lady was, a like, an Eric brother. He's a whole yeah, fucking but, brother. Like, so what they did is uh, the director once, once actually called Kevin Von Eric mm. and said, hey, dude, I can't put this brother in there because I don't have the time to tell all of this. And he goes, and on top of that, he goes, it kind of exactly sounds like what happened with your other brother anyway. And they thought it would be too dark to bring that much suicide. I gotta say, movie. man, this movie is a lot of, it's a big bummer of a movie. <laughs> You're like, yeah, because it is a big bummer. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and the thing is though, the thing is they had high times. Yeah. They had times that like, to me, I feel like this movie should have been, this movie should have been rising action, falling action, rising action, falling action, and then... What did you think of the guy who played Ric Flair, though? Woo! All right. So, um, this is... Okay, just like how any impersonator does not look like the person that tried to impersonate. Jim Carrey did not look like Adam Andy Kaufman. Mm. Uh, you know, a pro wrestler is even harder to impersonate than an actor. And the one thing about the Ric Flair character was like when he was in the ring, when he's back in the locker room, fucking looked magnificent. Looked great. Spot on, bro. I was all about him. But if at any time he when he had to do like the interview when he was doing the interview as Ric Flair that looked kind of cartoonish mm. like uh someone's doing an imitation of Ric Flair you know and stuff like that but um but to be honest after all the complaints i just said this was a really good movie i want to talk about how great Zac Efron was in this Zach Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Holt uh, McKinley, and uh, the mom, uh, Mariah Martini. Like Martini. Martini was great. They all were trained by Chavo Guerrero to be the Red Chavo Guerrero Jr. actually trained them all. Yeah. Uh, because he trains movie wrestlers. So anytime anything like the Young Rock or anything like that happens, Chavo Guerrero is usually the guy. I remember seeing the, the photos of uh, when they were filming this and seeing. How fucking insane are the arms of uh, of Zac Efron were? Because he transformed himself to be this character. You know what I mean? He really threw himself into this. And you can see that while watching this movie. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Side by side, bro. Yeah. There's Kevin Von Erich next to Zac Efron. Yeah, and it's it's insane really how, how they both look. Like, Zac Efron's never looked that cut and big, it's scary looking <laughs> dude. Um, because like, yeah, yeah and there's the whole family. Um, you know, Billy, uh, David. David's the saddest one because in wrestling lore and wrestling lore, mm -hmm. it wasn't a stomach problem. And oh, wrestling yeah. lore, he OD'd. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. In wrestling lore, he OD'd. And then Daddy, who uh, Fritz von Erich had enough pull with the press and all of that. Because you got to understand, at the time that this von Erich thing was going on, WWF did not exist. Yeah. It did, but it was just a territory. Everybody knew that the three big territories at this time was Texas uh, Promotional Wrestling or or WCCW, mm -hmm. uh, AWA, NWA, and those were it. Those were like, they, there's Smoky Mountain and there's Stampede, the Smoky Mountain Wrestling and there's Stampede Wrestling up in Canada. But like, this was literally, this was like one of the biggest, I mean, Andre the Giant came through, Jake the Snake Roberts, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Stone Cold Steve Austin started in that fucking ring. You know, yeah. like this is like one of the biggest um, 
or most po- famous uh, wrestling arenas in all of sports hi- uh, wrestling history. Oh. And the story of these guys is one of the most tragic. But the thing is, it's like um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. Bohemian Rhapsody, great movie. Mm. But guess what, man? The things that happen in order. The yeah. things that happen in order. Um, like uh, the motorcycle ride that yeah. uh, he loses, Carrie loses his um, leg on. This is a good part right here. Um, that didn't happen right after he won. That um, happened like two years later. He already <laughs> lost the belt. He only held that belt for 13 days. <laughs> wow. It, he lost it back to like it was they they're giving it to Carrie to because originally uh, plans were that David even though David was and I and I say this the nicest way possible I'm just saying uh, David as in um, what he looked like compared to what today's wrestlers look mm-hmm. like he was very he's he's the one all the way on the end in the white robe yeah Tall he guy. does not look the best he's not the the cutest, you know, best looking guy in the world. And he didn't work out as much as the other guys. You know, he wasn't as super fit and, you know, cut as the other ones. I don't think I have a black and white where he's got their... No, that's the entire Von Eric family. I thought I had one where he had his shirt off. But still, I mean... And so he was not... Like, but he was the best at pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. He was the guy. He knew how to do it. He knew how to work a crowd and all that stuff. Yeah, and, and well, it doesn't just that. He knew how to work the match. And therefore, he was, uh, that's why they're going to give him the belt. And the only reason Kerry got the belt was because his brother died and they wanted to do it in his memory. Yeah, so I, I like this movie because the acting we talked about was incredible. Um, all the acting is great. The story that they did was great. It was not the story. It was not the actual story. I, I guess I just kept talking about wrestling too much. Um, <laughs> let me talk about my actual view of this movie. Uh, the acting was great in this movie. The story was great. I bawled like a baby on the last words yeah. of this fucking movie. Yeah. Like, the last words of this movie, right before the lights came up, made me bawl like a little bitch. I was crying. I was like, and I'm sitting there wearing like a wrestling shirt, <laughs> trying to you know look tough, being in the corner of this theater that was absolutely real pack theater. But I cried like a little, little baby. And the thing is, the whole movie I didn't cry because – I knew as a, being a guy that knows the entire history of the Von Erics, I knew before when I saw things that were super happy, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this super happy scene right here. I know it happens the exact next day. So tell me about what you thought about Colt McCallany. Did he play Fritz Von Erich? Like, do you know Fritz Von Erich was that shitty of a person? He was an asshole mm-hmm. and a dick, and not many people like working with him at all. And he would do everything to fuck you over to make his kids. And he over. was he was heel, right? He played he played a fucking Nazi, right? Here it is. You ready? Yeah. Oh my god. There it is. Holy there shit. There it is. I, I picked one up just for you. Uh, so he originally was a Nazi, and then in the seventies, early seventies, he went from the Nazi character to being the family man, mm. being the everyman family man. Okay. And they got rid of the Nazi character. But, I mean, he was wrestling it. in the 30s. And, I mean, in the 40s. and yeah. the, if, You know, he was wrestling in areas that, you know, it made sense to be a bad guy. Because sometimes the bad guys make more money than the good guys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when it comes to wrestling, I have a few questions. You probably know a little bit. Uh, was this wrestling, is this the Federation still around? Or is it bought out by, like, the big guys? Uh, actually, it showed in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. It was bought out by the Garretts, if I believe, remember. Um, uh, the Jarrett's are, uh, Jeff Jarrett is a pro wrestler now. His dad, uh, uh, gosh, um, I knew you'd ask a question that I wasn't ready for. I mean, WWE owns all the rights to it okay, now. Okay, okay. Like, so you can, if you want to look at World Class and Championship Wrestling, if you have Peacock, you can go watch the Von Erics. You can go watch the Fabulous Freebirds and stuff like that. Um, so I believe it, Jeff Jarrett, his dad, um, gosh dang it, who's Jeff Jarrett's dad? Um, I think it's Jim Jarrett, but I don't want I don't want to lie to you and be wrong. And Jerry Jarrett, it's Jerry, Jerry Jarrett. Okay. 
Jerry Jarrett bought it from um, from them, and he was trying to do his wrestling and stuff like that. But that it uh, got bought out. He got bought out by Vince McMahon at some point. So I do want to ask, as as someone who's not a wrestling fan, do you still see them coming in and enjoying this movie? Oh, definitely, because as much as it does, it doesn't really reflect on the wrestling. Yeah, it's not really about wrestling. It's really about family. No, it reflects on just the tragedy yeah. of life. And, I mean, to go through this movie, it is all about, they got parts of the story wrong. And that's just what I'm complaining about as being a bitch. You know, like, literally, <laughs> you know, just like any other person on, um, any other person on, the internet, I guess. But the thing is, the the tragedy, the heartache, I think they could have done a little bit better on that. Maybe with the mom, maybe with um, how much it reflects. I, I think they showed it well for Kevin, but, I mean, Kevin was fucked, man. It's a, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a fucking bummer of a movie, man. Like, 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 like right from that first thing that, which shatters them to the end. You're like, God damn, like, what are you going to do? Like, and it, it's, but it, like you said, it's life. This stuff happened, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I can sit here and go through, um, people that I know mm-hmm. that this kind of same thing happened to them where they were one of many kids and now they're alone. Yeah. They're it. Which is, and, which is crazy. Like, like, that, like, if you guys want to even more bummed out, like, go read the Wikipedia. It exists in this, and you're like, fuck. You know, like... Yeah, and or if you want to know, okay, okay, this is my way to say this and to finish this discussion off and make it about the movie and not about the actual story. If you want to know the true story, go watch the Von Erich's Dark Side of the Ring or go watch the DVD. Um, that's an, a Dark Side of the Ring is available on Hulu, I think. And uh, the DVD, Triumph, uh, Tragedy and Triumph of the WCCW, uh, the DVD, which is on Peacock under the WWE titles. If you go look, those are two, and those tell us the exact story. Now, the movie itself. The acting was good. The arches were great. They, they told the story to a full wishing, but... I think they could have made it just a little bit better. And the way I think they could have made it, made it better was I think they needed to show how high the highs were. It felt really stuffed also. Like, like, like I, I knowing that they got a criticism even crazier to know that it felt a little put together, like pushed together a bit. Um, it, it, and like you're saying, I it could use higher highs and, you know, not, not just being fucking shot through the heart every time something bad happened, because that's what it felt like, you know, like right. You, you know, it gets a little weird near the end there, where they sort of, they get sort of speculative a little bit. Like, you're like mm. I think they spent too much time on trying to build the world at the beginning. At the beginning, they were taking too long building the world. Why Carrie is off doing the Olympics and all that stuff? They're too busy building the world. And then didn't give enough time for the the, the, the characters the themselves. Yeah, the character themselves. Like the one character we got the most about was Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. That was Kevin like, Von Eric. They nailed that guy. Yeah. They fucking got that down to a T. But I think they spent too much on building it up. And I think literally what I believe the way this movie should have gone is that I should have gone, I think it should have gone from when they start fighting with the fabulous free birds, which is considered one of the greatest rivalries in all of pro wrestling ever. Um, to the point where after that, um, the next thing, uh, the next thing should have been, um, the next thing should have been like, then here's the brothers and shown all. Cause if you went from that, when they're at the high of the highs, where they're the, the biggest thing, where, where Texas Ranger Stadium is selling <laughs> out with thousands of people to where they're rock stars. They can't even go out of their fucking house without getting mugged from people, from how famous. They were at Beatle level mania and show that, like, starting from the go and then show where it comes from there down. I think that would have been great. But they didn't do that. They started from the very beginning, and it sort of, 
it sort of feels different. I mean, the acting is fantastic. I won't knock any acting because all it's good, but I do feel like we could have gotten a bit more character development on some of them, you know, especially Carrie, which I mean, he was a pretty incredible character as it was, but Carrie and David really. Uh, I think Carrie needed more time. They didn't even talk about Carrie's family. They made him look like a loner. <laughs> he had a family. Yeah. In fact, his daughter was a, a TNA champion. Yeah. Uh, Lacey Von Eric. She was a champion of over at TNA Wrestling. The two sons of Kevin Von Eric are now wrestling in uh, AEW Wrestling. All right. Um. Again, we'll say the acting's good. Uh, we felt they could have done a bit different stories that would have made more sense, I think. I kind of feel, wish they'd fit in Chris because uh, Chris Von Eric existed. Oh. There's Lacey Von Eric. Yeah, her. <laughs> hey, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 it was a bummer of a movie. Um, you're going to cut the walkout thinking, fuck. That was sad. And you're going to look at the... And the thing is, it's not even the full story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want the full story, continue on. Because there, there's still sad shit that happens to that family continuing yeah. from that. Start, yeah. It's just the beginning. But, uh, you know, why don't you go ahead and get some quotes on this and we'll, we'll get out of here. Your face will get out of here. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 I will snap his neck. The only way to beat it is to be the strongest, the fastest, and the best there is. I will be the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Ever since I was a kid, people said our family was cursed. Mom tried to protect with God, my father with pro wrestling. Oh, yeah. And then the first people they showed wrestling against, Bruiser Brody and Chavo, uh, Chino Heret, uh, Hernandez, were both murdered. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, dude. Both those guys were murdered. So, yeah, that, that's uh, another story in wrestling. Definitely. If people, uh, if you want a good document story, seriously, go see uh, the Dark Side of the Ring stuff. Go watch it. It's not really about wrestling. It's really about the fucked up shit that happens behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Definitely. There are wrestlers that were murdered with bullets to the head that they that to this day the cops won't even touch the fucking case. <laughs> They're just like, oh yeah, that happened magically. We don't know. We have no idea how that happened. You're supposed to say nice things like, nice to meet you, Pam. Someone called from ESPN offering a Saturday night slot. What do you want out of life, Kevin Von Eric? More ribs. <laughs> you never heard the cure the curse of the Von Erics? This belt makes you a man. You're not a man. You're just a little boy acting like a man. I'm the champion. Me. Harley Race. If you put that down, son, someone else will pick it up. Terry, I want you to join your brothers in wrestling. This ain't about Georgia versus Texas. This is about filth against decency, and you know it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I know how to cut that promo, motherfucker. I just love being out there with you guys. It's the only thing that matters to me in this world. Take those sunglasses off. You're not having it here. And no tears. You can't show them how weak you are. Mm-hmm. The only fair way is to flip a coin and let it decide. He will be safer that way, you know it. I have nothing to do with the new... I have no idea what it says. It was a terrible accident. It shouldn't have been in the... shouldn't have been in the ring in the first place. It's all my fault. 
It was crying. At this you point, know, you know, the, the, it was a very dark theater, guys. Yeah. It was crying at this point, guys. So give, me, give me a break. Well, I can't even read that. No, I can't even read that one either. Damn, dude. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with him? Look at you, WWF Intercontinental Champion. I'm pain. I'm in pain. All the time, I'm in pain. I'm deformed. I'm fucking cursed, and I just want to die. Yeah, Dad, you can you can cry. I cry all the time. What's the problem? Well, I used to be a brother, and I'm not a brother anymore. Oh, that line! Yeah. Oh, there's not six of them. There's six fucking of them, bro. Yeah. And like literally to say that you had six brothers at one point, yeah, and you have none. What's your? Uh, why don't you go ahead and give your score on this one? To the Von Erics, I give him a five point zero, being one of the greatest wrestling teams of all time. Uh, I'm and talking the, I'm talking the, I'm talking all time. I'm wait, talking. wait, 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 wait. Let me finish what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You don't interrupt someone. You don't interrupt. You don't interrupt the rock when he's talking to you. I'll straight come out to you wrestling promo style, brother. All right, finish it up. All right. To the Von Eric family, I give you a 5.0 for having one of the hardest families of all time and tragedies and one of the craziest stories in this life. To the movie version of your story, I can't even get it a four, man. I got to give it like a 3.9. I don't think the arch was correct for this movie. I just, and not knocking the fact that they let out the brother, I understand they let out the brother, but the reason it's getting a 3.9 is 100% Zach Efron mm-hmm. and Jeremy Allen White. I'm those actually with two, the, I want to just, just, just with you, those that I think. The acting for those two, the way they transformed their bodies to be these characters, is yeah. Un- I, I hope they win awards. I hope they win a ton of awards, but I don't think the full movie should because I just don't think they did the arch correctly. I don't think they did the like. I feel like we could. You need it. This movie could have been more impactful if they made the hires higher and the lower lower. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But we didn't get that. We got something else. But. But, but uh, much respect to Zach Efron and Jeremy Allen White for doing exactly what they could do. And they did good. They did, they did the best and, they could and, do. And, and hands on for everybody doing this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I never thought I'd get a comic book movie with all these fucking comic book guys in them, let alone a wrestling movie mm-hmm. about the fucking Von Erics. I mean, the Von Erics are like, I could sit here, like, literally just roll the tape for an hour and just sit here and talk to you about the Von Erics. I won't do that because this is a movie podcast, not a wrestling podcast, which soon I will be releasing a wrestling podcast. I have it in the works. I have some new equipment I bought that's going to, or I got for Christmas that um, it's going to be coming my way, and I'm going to be doing that soon. Exciting, right? Yes. Because I can talk wrestling for a decade. Is there any stuff I sent you that, that, that you maybe asked for? I didn't. Did I ask? I didn't ask for anything. I told you I didn't want to do. I, I know, I know, but you just, did you see any, like, any recommendations? I have no idea what you're talking about this time, but this is for a conversation <laughs> later. Right. Uh, you're going to have to edit this out, Chris. Okay, yeah, I will. okay I'm on the RunTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for the Iron Claw? Man, I am 74%. 93%. They liked it more than I did. But maybe the, it's just because I know the story. That's probably the problem. What's the Chris score for the Iron Claw? 86. 88. You're really close. Damn it! <laughs> Chris, Why am I too <laughs> off? <laughs> Chris, since this it is powerfully acted and profoundly sad, the Iron Claw honors its fact based story with a dramatization whose compassionate exploration of family ties is just as hard as hitting as action in the wrestling ring. So that's, that's the score. I'm going to do a good review, or I'm going to do a bad review and a good review. Uh, this is um, from uh, Alonzo Dur- Duralde of Breakfast All Day. He says, this movie feels really overstuffed. It doesn't slow down enough to really establish 
that much in terms of character. Okay. And this is uh, from uh, Charles Bermesco of the uh, Inside Hook. He says, for all, the, uh, for all the administrative shows of love for wrestling, they come from Durkin. He also identifies it as a moral, mortally injured force to those who practice it, equates to give itself with Fritz's malignant approach to it. So he was showing that basically when you're a wrestler, you fuck yourself up and they let you know that when watching the Iron Claw. Yeah, I mean that's a true story. The whole the whole point of being a wrestler is like literally every night you go outside and you beat yourself up yeah. for other people's entertainment. Yeah, yeah. it is one hundred percent. I'm not gonna. I know more of the inside stuff than more than any. Than I'm not more than anybody. I'm not saying that. Uh, more than the, your normal pro wrestling fan because I have friends that are pro wrestlers. I tried pro wrestling at one point. Like literally. It is a thing, and it is so tough on your body. Literally, wrestling school is you learning how to fucking beat the shit out of yourself. Yeah, like like people say it's faking. Like, well, when they're falling and they're getting the shit hit out of them, like with a chair, that shit's not fake. You actually are yourself get by a chair. You let yourself Dude, fall seven feet. You know. Anytime someone says it's fake to me, I go, "Cool, go in there and take one fucking bump. Yeah, yeah. one, and tell me." what you feel like right after. Yeah. And then remember that they do that. It's not one bump. They take like a hundred bumps <laughs> in a, in a single match. Yeah. Just because that punching is a fake. Doesn't mean that that fucking, when they turned them over, it was fake when they, Hey, guess what? Wrestling, a wrestling ring. You know what a wrestling rings made out of, right? What's that made out of? <laughs> it is steel. Then it's wood planks with this much foam. I'm not kidding. No more bigger than that much foam. Over the wood, and then a mat, and then some of them don't even put that uh, that foam on it. Yeah, it's just the wood. You with the fuck mat. yourself up. Well, by point, like when you it's there, wood. Yeah. It's wood. They are falling down on wood planks. Yeah. All right, man. Um, so that's the iron claw. You gave it. A, we both gave it three point nine. I think. Uh, just yeah. We could thought that could have been uh, done a bit differently, and you know, whatever. And, and my, again, mine could just be, dude, I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. I know the story. Yeah. And to me, I don't think they could, they should have took Chris out. I really think they could have used it more mm -hmm. because the Chris thing is kind of what pushes Carrie over the limit. Yeah, that's, that's why Carrie thinks he's just all fucking gone and stuff like that. But I put Chris in this other podcast, so we give him a little bit of love. Hey, Chris Von Air. Yeah. <laughs> love. All right, uh, guys, you guys, you know, uh, next week we're doing uh, Aquaman 2 and The Rebel Moon, which is on Netflix. And then the week after that is our year roundup, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, on Wednesday, I think. It's on Wednesday. And we'll yeah, do it's on a Wednesday. Yeah. I, I have it scheduled off. I know that. Yeah, we have Mark, now I'm getting, like, I'm getting booked for a bunch of yeah. different, like, sports events. Yeah. Mark Radovich will be there. Uh, so, you know, like like tradition, he'll be there to talk about his top 10. We'll talk about his top 10, our own mentions, and our top Five worst. Um, and I still have yet to put that out there because I don't like talk that much about bad movies, but there were certainly some bad ones this year. Um, so we're doing uh, five missions, five worst, and top ten, right? Yeah, right correct. All right, cool. You guys find us online at moviesonsuck.net. We're w2mnet.com. This is W number two. Uh, M as a movie is net.com. You'll find us there along with a bunch of other uh, podcasts or uh, baller. You guys can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash news don't suck. Podcast or Twitter at NTS Podcast. Instagram at NTS Podcast. We're on Patreon. Patreon.com slash news don't suck. You'll find us there. If you guys have enough subscribers, we'll go ahead and start putting up bonus content. I'll have to pull Neil out of his uh, time playing Old Republic to get some <laughs> recording done. We're also, uh, we're also on Bonfire. You go to Bonfire.com slash news don't suck. You'll find uh, that shirt that Neil's wearing along with a bunch of other cool stuff that Neil's made. If you're watching YouTube, don't subscribe. Watch Facebook or watch us Facebook on their page. If you guys want to send us an old fashioned email? It's info at movies don't suck .net or movies don't suck podcast at gmail .com. And where do you find podcasts? Find movies don't suck and some that do. Neil, what do you do for small businesses? If you got a small business and you want to promote yourself right here, all you have to do is remember guess what? We'll do it for you. And we'll do it for free just mm -hmm. to our thousands of our listeners, our millions of followers. Let us know. Give us the information. We want to be a part of your world, mm -hmm. part of your life, and help you out and promote you out there, hopefully to make you millions and millions and millions of dollars. No strings attached. No strings attached whatsoever. 
Uh, well, Chris has some strings attached. Mm-hmm. He's pretty weird about that stuff. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you, you good to get out of here, pal? I'm good to go. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. I'm Chris. And remember, guys, no matter how hard the day is, no matter if the light is on the way and in or out, remember the famous words of Kevin Bon Eric when he said, every day I wake up and everything else is just a challenge, but that's okay. At least I woke up. You guys have a good day. Yes. Yeah,